So I was like, why am I hearing something? Um, yeah, I'm at Foxwoods in the hotel room. Um, if I turn the computer around, then Karen would divorce me. Because <laughs> you'd see her. Um, it's raining outside. It was raining in the casino, but God got me. I said, now it's raining outside. Yeah. Also, according to Family Guy, it's going to rain. So um, I haven't streamed because we're very busy and also because the internet here is not good. We're actually using the webcam that we normally use at the chess center. Karen brought it, the external one. So the video should be slightly better than it usually is from here. Uh, we don't have a microphone, so I'm using the computer mic. We don't have the lights from the chess center. Um, and we don't have the internet. So um, I'm actually watching from Karen's stream on another computer because, yeah, I can't, I can't watch... Um, the stream on this computer because then when I'm doing OBS, it goes to it. So that's not good. Yeah. So I'm trying to use... Uh, I'm, I'm trying to use my mouse on your computer and somehow it didn't work. Yeah. You want a mouse? Okay. No. No, I was... I mean, just to close something. I'm, I'm never going to go there. I'm just using it to look at. Yeah. Anyway, so I can see the stream on on Karen's account um, and now it's, yeah, the internet here is really bad. So even though this is okay for you, even watching the stream is hard because the stream stops a lot. It doesn't stop for you. It stops for me. I can't even watch my own stream because the internet's bad. So it's like, does this, so what I was doing is watching it in 160 P. Um, and I actually, I was watching ginger GM about 15 minutes ago and I, it was blurry. So I put it on 720 P. That's on 720p and it's not doing anything. Unfortunately, Karen gets a lot of pop-ups on her computer, so I can't see anything. All right, I can just get rid of them. It's Karen. I'm on Karen's account and Karen's typing. I'm not typing. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is um, I want to thank the people, if you can call them people, who came to our meetup yesterday. We might have another one today at four. Right, Karen? Maybe. Maybe. And then we, we had a couple of people. One even gave a donation, and one drove a long way to see me and Karen, so that was good. Okay, so if you've been following me, um, I've already shown my first round game on the stream um, basically that evening. So I played Wednesday night uh, round one, and I beat somebody, but I, I don't even remember what happened. I was black. Let's see, what, what happened in the game? I'm trying to remember my first round game, who I played and what the opening was. Um, I'm think. Oh, I I know he. No, I'm I'm thinking it was a Sicilian. Oh, that's right. He played knight e2 on move two, and we played sort of a g3 dragon by transposition, right. Okay, and then I won an exchange eventually, and he resigned right after the time control. This is a weird tournament for me because I have no draws, which is really weird. I have a lot of draws usually. And um, all of my games are 38 to 43 moves, like, exactly. I'm playing 41-move games. Man, your your computer likes to put things out I have to get rid of. Damn. You don't do that. It's just doing it nonstop. Oh, yeah, I agree with that, by the way. That does it on my startup, too. Okay, so I showed my first round game Wednesday night about midnight, and then I've played Thursday and Friday. I played two games Thursday, two games Friday. So I've played five rounds. I have three wins and two losses, um, not including blackjack losses. So please donate. And then, and then um, um, wow, we have less than 400 subscribers in the channel. Jesus, lost 800 subscribers in seven weeks. Anyway, and then um, I'm playing Ginger GM on Friday in six days uh, at noon Pacific. And then on Wednesday, um, I think 9 a.m. Eastern, I think. I'm sorry, 9 a.m. Pacific. That's what I meant. Uh, I'm playing in some weird Twitch Rivals thing that I don't understand against Komodo, and it's a team thing. I don't know. I don't know what that is. I'm confused. Anyway, so on this stream, which will last about an hour, it's about 9 o'clock here and my round's at 11. So I'll finish the stream about 10 and get ready for my game. Um, uh, we'll look at my games. Yeah, I, I don't know what Granky is. I don't care about Granky. Okay. 
So uh, this is my game from round two. This guy's an IM. It's actually older than me. I didn't think there was anybody on earth older than me, but my opponent is. Um, I had the white pieces. This was played Thursday at noon. Um, and he played the Polish defense, which is very unusual at the higher levels. I played a very safe, boring way, which gives white a tiny advantage instead of playing the most testing E4, because I like boring. So I played sort of a, you know, a London against his B5. So this is a very boring position. I always play A4 when they play B5 at some point. Soften them up. A5 is a little weird. Okay. Um, probably E2 is the wrong square for the bishop. It's okay. It's not terrible. I didn't want to go to D3 in case E4 comes. I didn't want to go to C4 in case D5 comes. I just went here. The other reason I didn't go to D3 or C4 was I thought he might play bishop A6 and trade the bishops. So I just safe over here. Okay. Bishop H2, save. And then rookie one. I thought about playing E4. So I played rookie one so I could play E4 soon. Now, if we go back, probably every move um, I should be playing C3. In fact, this position occurred in a Caruana game. Um, who was he playing? He's playing somebody, and he played C4. So I, I like C4 now, now that I see it. But, okay, I should be playing C3 every move and attacking his B-pawn, but okay, I didn't. All right, white's a little bit better. And now I, I finally played C3. He made a weird move here, played Rook B8. He wants to, you know, get over here. And one of the negatives of rook b8 is he's on the diagonal with my bishop, which isn't really that good. Because when c5 or e5 happens, he's got to watch it. So I don't like the move rook b8. Okay, now my opponent is older than me, if that's possible, but it is. I looked up his year before I played him on FIDE. And he played really, really slowly. And after the move bishop d3 in particular, because I wanted to play e4, he thought like at least 25 minutes in this position. So, yeah, that was a little crazy. Um, he played e5. Um, I don't want to take that pawn because my bishop's not defended on d3, and then I can come to c5. Thanks for the subscription, Hattie Kovic. You're the best. So I played e4, which is why I played bishop d3. And he thought forever again, like another 20 minutes. Okay, maybe I'll take the pawn now, but probably not. And he played rook e8. And this is funny. I thought a long time here, and the engine says, rook e it's terrible, and I should take this. And I thought about taking it because I want to, you know, get a queen. Um, yeah, the computer says I'm, like, close to winning here strategically. And I basically didn't look at this very much. I was looking at either taking or playing d5. If I played d5, all of my opponent's pieces are bad, and my bishop on h2 is bad. So I couldn't decide if that was worth it, making my bishop on h2 bad forever, but making all of my opponent's pieces bad, or playing d takes e5 and hitting his weak targets. So I decided to do that. Okay, it's also also good for, for, for white. Um, took back with a pawn, which probably isn't the best. Again, the computer wants me to take here. But I played knight b3 because I want to stop knight c5. Knight c5 is a good move. And I want to take the pawn on on a5. And if I play knight c4, which seems sort of normal, I block my bishop. I wanted to play either bishop b5 or bishop c4 later. So my knight on b3 doesn't block my bishop. Tax the pawn, stops knight here. Okay. He traded on c3, which the computer says is fine. And now he made a move that I barely looked at, but it's probably like the best move. Um, he, he played... Uh, Rick A8 defending his, his pawn. Um, this is funny. During the game, I hallucinated for like two seconds that he could take on E4, losing a piece, and then trade queens, and then take my piece on B3, which obviously is good for black. And then I was like, oh, there's a knight on D7. He can't jump over his knight and take my queen. However... The computer says it's like almost playable for black to take on e4, take, 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 and then knight f6, 
with the very same idea. You're attacking my rook and you want to trade queens and take my knight. Now that's good for white because um, you're losing a tempo and I'm, I'm taking all of your pawns. So I'll actually show you the variation the computer gives, which you know, neither one of us saw, I'm sure. So he wants to trade queens, then my knight's hanging and my rook's hanging. So the engine says that white's has like an, an advantage if I just give the piece back and then I can, I have a choice of the pawns to take, take this one. So this material is equal, but I mean, that C pawn is not good. And the A pawn is weaker than my A pawn. My A pawn is defended. So these, these pawns are in good shape. So it's like not winning for white, but it's better for white. So yeah, that, that idea did actually could happen. That kind of idea where he's unleashing on my knight. Okay, instead he played rook a8, defending his pawn, which computer actually says is good. And I played bishop b5. <coughs> Pinning his knight, and I'd like him to play c6, so his bishop is horrible. If he doesn't play c6, then right, pinning his knight. So, um, he played queen e7, which is okay. And I played queen c2 because my pawn is getting attacked eventually. Now here it's not attacked because his knight's hanging on d7. And his knight on f6 is defending his knight. So he can't really take on e4 because he's got to defend that knight. Um, but eventually he will take on e4, but not when I defend it. Okay. And he unpinned. That's the computer move. And I played rook a d1. Probably better is rook a b1. But rook a d1 is okay. So I was very happy here because I had a lot more time. And I have pressure on his a pawn, pressure on his knight, pressure on his e pawn. And his bishop on g7 is not, that's not a scary bishop. So I have a, sort of a nice advantage here. Yeah. I have a donation? What? What's going on? What world am I in? Um, eventually I'll see it. $11.25. Ben, you're the funniest GM ever. I really enjoy your videos. From Spain. Thank you. Also, I'm the funniest looking. Thanks, Callie. $11.25. That sounds like 10 euros. Yeah. Okay. My, my stream is fascinating, so Karen fell asleep. All right. So he did eventually play c6. The computer doesn't like that move because it blocks his bishop. Um, and I... Now, now trying to learn one, two, three, four, he was very upset here, um, which I saw later on Discord and, and you know, Twitter and stuff. He wanted me to play Bishop F1, always play Bishop F1. That's actually the computer choice. I almost played Bishop F1. I don't want it on D3 or E2 because it blocks my rooks. So basically I was either going to C4 or F3, F1. Actually, the computer really hates C4. I liked it because I want to play Knight G5 and, you know, put some pressure on him. But yeah, computer doesn't like bishop c4. And I didn't see his next move, and he didn't see his next move either. Um, the engine says he should play knight e8, which stops knight g5. And also the knight can go to d6. And then why the hell is my bishop on c4? So neither one of us saw knight e8, I don't think. He's not winning. He's still worse, but that's a good move. Okay, he played knight h5, which also stops knight g5. And now maybe his knight will go to f4. Okay, I played rook b1, which I like, because I want to, you know, put some pressure on his bishop. The engine's thinking maybe bishop c8. I mean, I know I'm ugly, but that's pretty ugly. So he played knight f8, his queen defends his bishop, and maybe his knights will come to f4. You never know. And I'm pretty proud of this move. It might not be the best move, but it's one of the best moves. Um, it's just a hard move to find. Um, one of the engine moves is actually to play knight c1, and then my rook is on his bishop, and my knight can go to d3 and attack his e-pawn. I didn't see that. I played queen c1 because I want to defend the g5 square, and I, if he plays knight f4, I want to have some extra guys on it, and I also want to play queen e3 and knight c5. So I like queen c1 a lot. Queen c1 is a good move. Um, he played bishop c8, which is the computer move because his bishop is getting harassed here all the time. So here it's on a nice diagonal also. Maybe he can thwart my bishop. And we're getting in time trouble here. It's move 23. So we both had less than half an hour, and probably he had less than 10 minutes. He's playing pretty slowly. Queen e3. I want to put something on c5. He played knight f4. Now the engine wants me to take that, but I don't really want to give up my bishops. It wants to go takes, 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 takes on c3. 
Rick C1, and it really likes white. I mean, I saw that, but I didn't. He's got two bishops. So I'd play queen b6 because that's very annoying. If Karen was awake, she would agree that I'm annoying. Um, I'm attacking all of his pawns, and I'm putting pressure on his rook. So I, I basically have pressure everywhere. I'm attacking, like, everything, and he's, like, sort of holding it by a thread. Um, he played the computer move, bishop e6. And now the computer doesn't like my move. Um, it wants me to take the knight again. I played knight takes a5. And now it says it's equal. Um, but the move that equalizes is not a move I would ever look at ever. It's not a move that makes any sense at all. <clears throat> I barely understand the move. It's, it's queen e8. I mean, I'm never playing queen e8 or looking at queen e8 or scared of it. But this engine says queen e8 is equal. So I don't know. I, mean, I was playing queen e8. Um, yeah, computers think differently than humans about stuff. Nobody's ever playing queen e8. So there's a funny story. Anand was playing Doofus, and by Doofus I mean like twice 2750. And one of the commentators, who was a very strong grandmaster, I don't remember who it was, probably Svidler, he said, Well, the engine says this is the move, but Anand's not going to play that. And then Anand played that. So like nobody would play queen e8, and then Magnus plays queen e8. Okay. <clears throat> So he played rook takes a5, which is not good. Notice the knight was defending my bishop. So I have to take the bishop on e6. And now he made the losing move. Although I thought during the game he was losing because he's down a pawn and his rook is hanging on a5 and his pawn's hanging on c6. And I have the two bishops. So I already thought I was winning. Uh, maybe I'm winning. The best move seems to be rook c5 which saves his rook, defends his pawn, attacks my pawn, attacks my bishop. And then after bishop b3, white has a big advantage because white has two bishops and a passed a pawn. I got to believe white's winning there. He played rook a4, which is a tactical blunder. And for once in the tournament, I saw tactics. Later in the game, I didn't see any, but I saw them here. I actually saw this a few moves ago. I knew he couldn't do this. Yeah. If chess is played perfect, then it's a draw. Um, do I like Svidler? I used to like Svidler, and then he was on the wrong side of the St. Louis Agedmid or uh, kerfuffle. No, Svidler's okay. He just he didn't underst he doesn't understand St. Louis. Yeah. What are you gonna do? It's hard to understand them. Yeah. Um, I don't know what Granky is. So I'm not supporting anybody. Okay, yeah, it's Bishop takes f7. Very good, Nate. Yeah, and he, he can't take it with the king because Queen b3 check wins his rook. He can't take it with the queen because his queen defends his rook. So he plays king h8. And um, I save my bishop, which is fine. And yeah, now I'm up uh, a pawn, and I have the two bishops, and his c pawn's hanging, and his king is weak. And his bishop on g7 is no good. So the engine says I'm up like 2.5. Yeah. Okay, I tried to make it simple because time trouble is looming. e5 is pretty good. Um, yeah, here I thought a long time because I thought every normal move won, and it's true, every normal move does win. I thought about queen c7, queen takes c6, queen d4, and queen b4. And I thought about all of them for a long time. Now, this engine, on this is different than my engine that I use on chess.com, um, says queen c6 and queen b4 are about the same. Um, I think my engine prefers queen c6. I play queen b4. Um, this pawn's weak. This pawn's a monster. Uh, knight's coming in here if he trades queens. So the engine wants to play rook e8. Says I'm winning. He played here. His knight's pinned. I want to take this pawn. I don't want knight d3 to happen. So I played bishop c2. That's the computer move. Played rook a2. And now I made a move my engine doesn't like, but this engine says it's fine. My engine and this engine want to play rook e2. I, I don't like that move. I don't want to, like, sort of pin my bishop. In time trouble, I'm not doing that. Yeah. So I played um, rook c1 because that defends my bishop and it's not pinned. So, yeah. Okay. Um, Karen's trying to distract me, but I can't be distracted. Okay. So, no matter how naked she is. Okay. So she's got a phone call from her brother, I think. Yay, I got a subscription. Go, Bemba, stay there. 
Eddie Kovich. Didn't you already do that? Didn't I already read that? I don't think so. Thank you. Um, right. No, the chess.com engine is Stockfish, but I have a better version of Stockfish. This is the chess.com online version. Yeah. Yeah. No, this chess.com engine isn't, uh, you know, usually isn't the latest version of Stockfish or the best. It's okay. The problem with the chess.com engine is the, the, the depth doesn't go very deep. Um, on my, on my Stockfish, I can let it go forever in depth 30, 40, 50. This one like stops at 20. This, this engine is sort of like, you know, like you guys. Yeah. It's like if you guys were analyzing it. Um, all right. So he played Bishop F8. Always play Bishop F8. Computer prefers Queen F8. Yum, 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 yum. I'm up two pawns. Played Knight E6. Um, Queen C4 is okay. Rook B2 is okay. Yeah, now I made a tactical error. And by tactical error, I don't mean that I made a bad move. I just didn't see what he should do. And I probably had less than five minutes, and he probably had less than 20 seconds here. And the engine doesn't play my move. It plays other moves that win. My move wins, but my move won quicker than the engine move. I played bishop b3, and I missed what he should do here. Um, and after the game, he was mad he didn't play queen a7. After queen a7, I just defend f2, and he resigns. Queen a7 is terrible. I play like rook f1, and he resigns. So, actually, he only has one move he doesn't have to resign. That's queen c5, which is the same as queen a7, except you're threatening mate and we're trading queens. And you have to trade queens here with black, and then you're just sort of normally lost. You're down two pawns and you're lost. So maybe like a super GM game, black would resign. Even a regular GM. My opponent's an older I am. He's only 2270 feet. He used to be 2370 feet. He's like me. Yeah. So, anyway... Um, yeah, whatever. Okay, so uh, he blundered here because he had seconds on his clock and he played knight c5, which is not the best move. And then I played checkmate. He, he didn't see he was checkmated even after he moved. Like, he was surprised when I checkmated him. He was like, whoa, checkmate, damn. So he was losing or worse for almost the whole game. And probably my technique wasn't great, but it was okay. I mean, I haven't played a rated tournament since September and I haven't played a tournament that was FIDE rated where everybody was, you know, like over 2,200 for like forever for two years. So anyway, so I'm getting back into it. So that game wasn't really that bad. Okay. And then um, we'll look at the round three game. Unfortunately, not, not one of my better games and I'm being nice. One of my worst games. Um, you guys can donate now between games if you want. I won't stop you. I'll still read it. Uh, let's see. Okay, so it's funny. After my game, I, I told Matt Larson what happened. And he said, oh, yeah, I played that guy in a Blitz tournament last month, and he destroyed me. Yeah. So, yeah, he won his first three games pretty easily, um, the guy who beat me here. And then the next two rounds, he lost in, like, 10 seconds. He, like, the GMs who are better than me just blew him off the board. Like, really badly. Well, like in an hour. Okay, so I have a donation. Um, it seems like there's a huge delay here because the internet's bad, I guess, between the stream that you're watching and me actually talking. Um, I still haven't seen the donation. Wow, that's a bigger... That's really long. It's like 30 seconds at least, the, the, um, the lag. It still hasn't popped up? Wow. Wow, four dollars and ninety nine cents is prize donation. Thank you, F three, Gilhan. That was like forty five seconds between me hearing the donation noise and seeing it on the stream. Wow, that's like the longest I've ever seen a whatever you call it lag. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, well, you guys aren't chatting very much, and your chat is as stupid as usual. Yeah. Um, we play. I played one game on Wednesday, and I play two games a day: Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So my next game is in an hour and forty-five minutes, eleven a.m. local time. Karen plays seven rounds. She's in a different section. She's played three games right now. This is a one-hour stream. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So this is my game with Joshua Ruiz, um, and he's an IM. He has about the same FIDE rating as I do. His USCF's a little lower. 
we played sort of a boring, ready kind of, you know, fiend cato, boring. I like boring. Okay. Yeah, this is not very interesting. Yeah. Okay. And he played e4. This is the kind of position I have a lot, and I sort of like it, but I don't play very well. I don't do very well. So I should probably stop doing it. I've lost a lot of games in these positions that I shouldn't lose. I, just, I thought I played these positions well, but since I lose all the time, maybe I'm wrong. Um, Enoch Wisdom just subscribed. Thank you. Anyway, I just sort of sit around doing nothing, and I got rid of my white square bishop. Okay, he played e4. Yeah. Okay, and this is where everything went wrong. Um, this position's about equal, and there's a move that I clearly have to play here, and I realized that after I moved. I thought about playing this move, and I was like, eh. And then I made the move illegal. And then after I made it illegal, I was like, I should have played that. Then I spent the rest of the game trying to play it. Then when I played it, it lost. So my engine says b5 is equal. The point is you want to control d5. So for example, if c5, I have total domination of the d5 square, and this bishop's terrible, and this pawn's backward and weak. And if you don't, if you take on b5, then you have an isolated d pawn. I have this, and I have the d. So basically, white just sits here, and then you trade here, and white has a lot of loose pawns, and the game's about equal. Okay. And that, I've done that before. I've played b5 in similar positions. In fact, I won a nice game against Anatoly Lane, where I was actually winning his queenside pawns doing that. I decided not to play b5. I thought b5 was okay, but it didn't matter. The problem is I can't do anything. I'm just going to slowly get squeezed. So I played queen b6, making b5 illegal. And then after he made random legal move, I decided b5 was a good move, and I've made it illegal. So I played queen a5 so I could play b5. And then he played bishop c3. And now I was trying to decide whether to play queen a3 or queen a6. And the engine says, don't do that. Like, move your queen somewhere else. <laughs> so I played queen a3, which is a very bad move. He played the excellent queen d2. And I made the losing move. Now, here my position's pretty bad. He has the two bishops, and I'm just moving my queen every move, acting like an idiot. And the right move is to move my queen and act like an idiot. I got to, like either play queen a6 or queen d6. The reason I didn't play queen a6 in this position was he plays a4, and my queen's not, not very good. So, yeah. All right, so he played queen d2, and I made the losing move here. It's very embarrassing because I, I left the board at some point, go to the bathroom, look at Karen's game. Then when I came back, he had already moved, and I was like, oh, I'm just lost. So I, I never saw his move. So I played b5, finally. <clears throat> and I just totally missed that my queen's trapped. Now, obviously, my queen has the a6 square. So I was like, well, my queen always has the a6 square. And if he plays bishop a5, my queen has lots of squares here to retreat. So, you know. And this is actually one of my biggest chess weaknesses. I often make tactical mistakes to moves that are very anti-positional and I don't look at. So if you have a move that in my mind looks dumb, but it wins tactically, I might miss it because it looks dumb. And when I was a weaker player, when I was a teenager and in my early 20s, and I wasn't as good at chess, I didn't have the deep understanding I have now, no moves really looked dumb to me. So I was looking at all kinds of moves. And then I was seeing more tactics because sometimes the tactics work. And now I'm like, that move's stupid. I'm not looking at that. And then that move wins tactically because I missed something. And that's what happened here. Um, as I said, queen, queen a6 is my only safe square for my queen. So he just stopped me from going there. And he does it two moves in a row. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, J, J Matthew. Yeah, J Matthew's right. Yeah. So, yeah, he took on b5. And I realized, like, taking on b5 looks really stupid. Because when I take back, you opened up my rook, you isolated your pawn. This positionally doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense tactically. And I realized here that what, what's happening, but I, nothing I can do here. I mean, I can't let him take on c6. So I thought about not taking back, and I was like, well, everything loses, and taking is correct. 
And now he plays bishop b7, attacking my rook. And more importantly, stopping queen a6. So if it's his move, bishop b4 wins my queen. And bishop takes rook, wins the exchange. So I'm just lost. So it's it's too bad that um, I'm just losing after b5. It's just over. Yeah. Oh, well. Okay. So I played the best move, bishop h6. If he takes my bishop, I take his bishop. If he moves his queen to keep the equilibrium, it doesn't work. His queen has to be on d2 because his queen's defending his a pawn and his queen's defending the bishop on b4. So if he moves his queen and I move my rook, you, you can't win my queen anymore. But he can play f4. It's the only winning move, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay, so I sack the exchange, which the computer recommends. Bishop g7 is okay. Rook f2 is good. And, yeah, here I couldn't find any counterplay. And during the game, I thought I was getting counterplay. I thought he was messing it up. And the engine's like, no, it's always lost for you. And I'm like, all right. And I was getting in time trouble. So I'll, I'll quickly just show the rest of the game. But I started pushing my king's side pawns, hoping to attack his king. So we were attacking each other's kings. And I thought I was getting counterplay, but the engine's like, no, you're just losing. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't defend my g-pawn here, so I have to give my e-pawn away. I thought maybe his king was in trouble if I could get my queen in here somehow, but I can't. Yeah, and this was move 40. I made move 40 with like two seconds left. Um, he's going to play rook here, and he's going to, you know, oh, he's, he's winning everything. Yeah, and this is my 40th move, and we made the time control here. And, okay, I have a check. So he played a4, and I can't move here. I have no move. No legal move. So I thought for like five minutes, and I resigned. If you turn an engine on, it's it's a lot worse than you understand. I just can't move at all here. And he's going to play either rook c6 or rook c8 and checkmate me. Um, yeah. I have like no legal moves. Um, even the engine here on chess.com, you can call it an engine. It's not, it's not too happy. So there you go. Yeah, connect four, and I still lost because he took on e6. Okay, so that wasn't a good game because I, I thought about playing b5, and I didn't play it. And then when I realized I should, I would play it, I played it when I couldn't. And I didn't see bishop b7 when I played b5. And, and then, okay, after that, I was just, I was just losing. And I, I thought I had good chances on the king's side, and he wasn't playing correctly. But the engine says no. says he's playing fine. All right. So... That was the first game I've lost in a slow rated game in two years. So that was unfortunate. Okay. Then I played Nikhil Kumar. Um, Fide Master, 2300 Fide. Um, former World Under 12 champion. And I had the white pieces. And basically, I old manned him because I'm an old man and he's 14. Um, so... Usually 14-year-olds know a ton of theory and are real sharp, and old men don't know any theory and they're not sharp. So I made the game as boring as I could, traded everything, and I won a boring endgame. So I really, it's called old manning someone. And I'm an old man, so I did good. He's young. He's taller than me. Okay, so I'm white. I played B3 because I want to get him out of theory. We actually transposed into theory that I didn't know. And I actually made a mistake pretty quickly. So I don't know this, but it's there's a lot of games. Castles is more accurate than knight c3, but we transposed. Yeah. Okay. Now, this position has a lot of games, and I didn't know the position, and I immediately made a bad move. Uh, there's a very nice game, if you want to look it up later, between Aronian and Nakamura that Levon won with white, and he played the move queen b1. And the idea is... He wants to line up his queen and bishop here with bishop c3, queen b2, put his rook on d1. He's leaving his rook on a1 on purpose, which I don't understand, and then I understood later. I didn't understand it this game, because in this game, we just played rook c1, rook c8. Rook c8 is a bad move, rook c1 is a bad move. After rook c1, the engine actually prefers black, because black can play a5, a4, and get the a file, and get some counterplay. And soften up black the queen side. I can't really take it because c4 has a passed pawn. And my pawn's going to fall. Black's actually better after a5, a4. 
obviously Aroni understood that and played queen b1 and bishop c3 and queen b2 and rook d1 and he beat Naka pretty nicely so rook c1 is a bad move and he played rook c8 neither one of us was privy to that a5 a4 counterplay okay truth hurts and the rest of the game i played okay uh, queen d2 is okay and this position has actually occurred before and he played a novelty not a good novelty. White's obviously slightly better, better pawn structure. These bishops aren't aren't as good as my bishops. Yeah. Um, yeah, this rook's not very good. My rook can go to d1. So. All right, so he played takes, which is anti-positional, just giving himself the isolated pawn. He's just trading, hoping to draw, but I'm an old man, so I like when I can't hang all my pieces. Yeah. So I thought a long time here, the engine doesn't like my move very much. The engine wants me to trade all the rooks. I don't like that. I think the engine is just wrong. So I played bishop b2 because <clears throat> I want to put pressure on d5, and I can't do it with my queen on, with my queen blocked. Um, and then I can sort of go to work on d5 and go to work on g7 and, you know, finagle around. The reason the engine doesn't like bishop b2 is it thinks over the next five moves black should play here. I'm not that concerned with that. Okay, so we played all right. F6 isn't a good move, obviously. This is actually why I didn't play queen b2, because I thought f6, his bishop has f7, and he might play f6 anyway, so why am I putting my queen here when I could just leave it on d2? So it turned out I was ready to play f6 when it was unnecessary. Queen f4 is not a good move. I was probing, and then after here I realized I just have to go back to d2. So I did. Always repeat. Yeah, now he made a very bad move. I played e3 because at some point he might go d4. In fact, he might play bishop c5 and then d4. But now he can't do that. I can just block on d4. Or I can play rig d1 and stop it. And he made a very bad move here. Played a5. That severely weakens the b6 pawn. It's not a good move, a5. So now even though I was at d4, now I go back. Because now he's got two pawns I can work on. Now he's much worse. Yeah, bishop b4 is not great. It's okay. Queen e2, I want to go to b5 or a6 and attack this pawn again. And yeah, I mean, he just has two weak pawns. I mean, I have a threat now. Um, queen d6 is probably the losing move. Bishop c5, probably super GM would hold this with black. But he played here. Now he's probably lost. The engine wants me to take and play e4. I actually saw this line. But I didn't do it. This is the engine line. And I, I didn't like this because I thought I have some back rank issues. I was worried at some point, like, he'd play bishop here and take and rook c1. And I didn't like all these open files for his pieces. And the open diagonal to my king, my bishop's attack. It's very tactical. I didn't like that. Now, it's the best way to play. It's the computer line. But I don't like doing those kind of tactical operations when there's so much... I mean, I can make a mistake. And if I just don't make a mistake, I'm going to win because he has all these weaknesses. So I made the practical decision. I played h4. Um, I don't want to get mated on the back rank, so I have h2. And I also might want to play h6 later. So I like h4. Bishop c5 is okay. Queen b5 is okay. And now he blundered a pawn, and I think he just didn't see it. Um He's in a lot of trouble here because his pawns are so weak. B6 is weak. D5 is weak. The diagonal to his king is open. He doesn't have lift for his king to be safe. His, his only lift is like here, which is not, not very safe. So I, I'm like half a pawn to a pawn better here. And he's made a tactical blunder, which usually I'm making the tactical blunder. What the hell? Yeah. So he played bishop d7, and that just loses a pawn. So now I calculated almost to the end of the game. I calculated like another 20 moves, and I was like, that's got to be winning. So um, I take, and I'm threatening his queen. So he has to play rook take c5. Um, if he tra trades here, I have the intermezzo bishop takes d5 check, and he can't take my bishop because he gets made on the back rank. So here's, here's his lead. So he has to take with the rook, and... If he takes with the queen, I trade queens and play rig d5, and he resigns. And if he takes with a pawn, I take his a pawn, and 
this rook's hanging, is the evil one's hanging. She has to take my queen. And this is all sort of forced. And when I played <clears throat> bishop takes c5 to start this, I was calculating this ending forever. So I calculated that this would happen. And I was looking at king here um, when I when I played bishop takes c5. And I noticed I could play a4 and then king d4, and that's it. I just won. So you can't do that. And I was like, well, if he can't play king b4, then I'm just winning. I'm going to put pawn, and I'm going to pass pawn on the king side. Pawns on both sides. He played h6. I played bishop f7. I want to push my e pawn, but king's on my bishop. And I want to control the queening square. So bishop f7. <clears throat> bishop c6. Queen the e pawn. Um, and he's probably just lost here. Um, I didn't want him to play b4 and keep my pawns here, because then maybe he'll come in and get them somehow. So I played a3. Yeah, yeah, I think he's just lost. And here he made a move that loses immediately, although I think it doesn't matter. I think he's just lost. When there's pawns on both sides of the board and you have an extra pawn and it's advanced and it's passed, he should just be winning. And the engine says, like, plus three, plus four. And here I actually played a very nice win. I'm actually proud of myself for once. Um, I traded pawns because in, it doesn't matter. But in the end, I don't want him to trade pawns, and I have the wrong color grip pawn. So I want to keep G pawns just in case. And now I played the win, the winning move. I think more than one move wins, but this move, this move really wins. This is the winningest. Ist, ist. Um, the games are on the internet at followchess.com. Go to the Foxwoods website, the chess one. Yeah. When you calculate and they really happen, do you play them like in a blitz game? No, you still play relatively slowly. Good morning. Okay, so the move is b4 check. I want to get his king away from my pawn. And then king to d4. Yeah. So the gist of it is, in some kind of world where I win his bishop for my pawn, and then he wins my bishop for his pawn, then I, I just win. I go take his pawn and I queen. That's like the best world he can be in, too. So the absolute best he can do is be losing. But this is he can resign here because that's the best he can do is I do this and his king can never get over here and take my pawn because he can't legally get over there. He can't do it. So you play king a3. It makes sense. And I don't want to do this, which does win. I want to take this pawn. So he has to play bishop to d7 and then here. And he has to move his bishop. To stop me from queening. Yeah. And he has to take it. And now he resigned because, you know, even you guys understand, I think. I guess this is slightly more accurate. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So he resigned after king e6. Could have resigned earlier. I think my engine announces mate in 17. I guess it was 16, but I was wrong. So that was probably my best game because I, I think I was always, I think I made one bad move, rook c1, because I didn't know the a5, a4 idea. Um, and didn't realize it was good for him. Otherwise, I think I played pretty well. So, And I used my time better that game. I wasn't in time trouble. So that was last night. So I have three out of four, three wins and a loss. And then no, that was that was yesterday morning, I mean. Then last night I, I had a crazy game, like really crazy, like really crazy. And I disdained to draw because I wanted to win, and then I lost. <clears throat> and this is my game with Justin Sarker. I think he he also played in uh, in uh, Reykjavik. Just finished two days ago, or three days ago. Yeah. So this is my craziest game for sure. I have black. And um, yeah. When I saw your game, it said you have massive time advantage. Yeah, I had a big time advantage until about move twenty five, and then I did. Then I had time advantage. Yeah. Yeah, I was up half an hour on the clock. You can't trust the clocks online. But I, I did have half an hour time advantage. Then, then it went away a few moves later. It happens. So I played my opening. It turned out this is my game with Gazzoli. <clears throat> and against Gazzoli, I played king f8. Uh, my Majara played h3 against me here. Won that game too. And this is my game with this is my game with Gazzoli right here, which I won two years ago in the Pro Chess League. Um 
in our match with the French team that we won. They had MVL and Bacro and Gazzoli and, and Dufus. I got two out of four, and we won easily. We won like nine, to, nine and a half, six and a half, I think. Anyway, against Gazzoli, I played King F8. Gazzoli made a, a mistake early. When he played B4, he took on C5 too quickly, and I took with a D pawn and put my knight on D6. So I castled in this game. I didn't know this was my game with Gazzoli. I didn't remember that this exact position happened. Okay. Queen B1 is a weird move, but he wants to stop F5. And he wants to, you know, push his pawns. Either. So it makes some sense. Okay, I wanted to play F5. So I decided to move my knight and play G6, F5. And I didn't want my knight on H8 because then F5 is not defended as much. And the knight's not that good on H8. It's okay if there's no D pawn, then I can go to D6. So I decided to play knight E7. So that takes a long time. Bishop, I did it. I played bishop f6 and knight e7 and eventually g6 and bishop g7 and f5. So I, I did do everything. Okay, and he played a good move, queen e1, putting pressure here and defending that. Yeah, he really used his queen on the back rank well to do stuff. Yeah. So I wanted to play... Um, what did I want to do? Oh, yeah, I wanted to play bishop h6 and get rid of this bishop that's going to win my pawn because he's going to play knight c1, knight b3, and take my pawn. So I want to play bishop h6 and trade the bishops because my bishop's not very good anyway, and this bishop's great. This bishop's terrible. So I play king h7. He played knight c1 to go here, and I decide, well, his knight's not there anymore. Rawr, attack. Okay, and then I thought king g2 was a blunder, and I was close to winning when I'm just worse. Yeah, f4 is probably not a good move. But it's okay. It's just not that good. Yeah, he played king g2. And now I got really, really ambitious. And my move's not bad. It's just I thought I was doing great when I'm like worse. So, yeah. I got really excited. And I played g5. I want to play g4. He took. And I played knight g6. And I'm going to come come get him. Um, yeah. Okay, so now I thought forever. I thought like 20 minutes here. And my calculation was actually right. Um, and I was like, well, that loses for him. That loses for him. That loses for him. That's a draw. I couldn't find a win against the draw, so I didn't do it. I ended up uh, doing something else. So the draw is if I take this and then I have this perpetual check. And he, he can't play queen f2 because his rook's hanging. And he can't play king h2 because knight h4 wins. I'm threatening mate and mate. Okay. And I thought if he tries to win with, like, king f2, that I'm winning, which is true. I am winning. Now, this engine says knight h4 wins. Oh, I meant I meant if he plays king e2 to try to win. Not, not King f1 is still a draw. Um, that this wins. So this is one of the variations I analyzed, and then he's in check, and this is hanging. And after king d1, I analyze this, and then I win. And the engine agrees. I'm right. Yeah. Okay. So I was like, I win, I win, I win, I win, and then I'm like, oh, this is a draw. So I was trying to win this position by, like, sacking all my pieces, like, in my head. And I was like, nah. Although the engine says sacking all my pieces this way is a draw. But Okay. So I have a draw, and I didn't want to draw, and I thought like 20 minutes, and I played knight f6, which isn't that bad. Knight f6 is okay. And then my next move was a blunder. Um, he played king f1, which is correct, which I expected. If he takes this, and I play king g8, he's going to get killed on g4. He's just losing here. So he played king f1, so now he can take on h5. And the my engine says rook h8, and black is slightly better. You know, to play king here and take with the rook and stuff. And I, I saw that, but I misevaluated it. And I made a move that probably just loses. I played bishop h6. I thought mainly about king g8 to unpin my pawn and bishop h6 unpinning my pawn. And I, I slightly regretted not taking the draw now because I thought I was worse. But after rook h8, I'm actually better. But it's just too complicated and we're getting in time trouble here. And yeah, now I'm just lost. Yeah. And the thing is, when I when I played g4 and queen g5, I didn't see knight e2. And 
like right around here I saw 92 and I was like, oh. If he doesn't play 92, you know, I'm winning. Uh, he's lost. And I thought, man, if he ever takes on H5, I'll take with the knight and I'll play knight G3 check. And then I realized at some point, oh, yeah, 92. And 92 is winning for him. Otherwise, I'm completely winning. No. And now yeah, that's no good. And this is no good. And this is no good. Yeah, this is no good. Yeah, I got nothing. Okay, Rook F6 defending my pawn. And yeah, I just, I got nothing. Yeah. Like, I can't do anything. And my F pawn's pinned. Damn. Harsh. So the computer evaluation just says I'm dead lost. I knew I was lost during the game, but I thought maybe I'd have some tricks. But I, I had less time also. <clears throat> so I sort of went all in and then I had to fold. Um, but yeah, I could have drawn with Bishop G4. But I thought I was better. I thought I was winning earlier, and I was never better. And then, and then I could have played Rook H8 if I had seen the variations and understood it better, and I would have been okay. I might have still lost, but the computer likes my position. And I think, I think the main problem I had, I think, is I thought after Rook H8 in this position, if he takes, I didn't see I could play King G8. I thought I had to take back and pin my knight. But King G8 is the right move because I want to take with the Rook um, because if we trade Rooks, I, I finally have all these squares for my pieces. So I just, I needed to play, I needed to see King G8. So Rook H8 is a hard move to see. I did see it, but I didn't evaluate it correctly. And then I'm just losing after this. It's just lost position. Yeah. Bishop G4. This is funny because I want to do some kind of tactical tricks. Like, if he takes, I want to play knight g3 check. I have lots of tricks here. Um, probably still losing, but tricky. But he played a really good move I didn't see. He just played rook a3 defending his pawn. And now all my pieces are hanging. I, if it's a bug house, maybe I can do something. Knight h8, so I open the file, and my knight can go to f7 and defend everything. Also, it's knight h8. King e1 is obviously the best move. Because he gets rid of all these tricks that I have. He just runs to safety and I don't have any tricks. Okay, and I just started taking my pieces. And here he played like the simplest way to win. Everything wins, he's up a piece. But this is this is simple what he did. He sacked on f4 because he's got this action going on. And my bishop's pinned. So, yeah. So, like, this is pinned and this is pinned and this is attacked. And, yeah. It's not good. This is attacked. So he's just, I'm completely lost here. So I took, and now he's threatening rook takes bishop check because my rook's pinned. So I unpinned, and he had good technique. Now if he plays rook g4, I play bishop g3, bishop f4 stopping rook g3. So he played rook g3, which I knew he would play. I just hope he would. Yeah. And now I resign because he's going to go here next move. And then I can't move. I, I can't legally move. I just sit in the pin forever and lose. So the computer says he's like plus eight here. So down material and can't move. So that was unfortunate. I went all in and it didn't work. And I had to draw and I didn't want it. I'm sort of glad I didn't take the draw because I, I could have played Rook H8 and still had a reasonable game. And I just don't want to draw. I mean, I'm playing a low-rated player and the game is really interesting. So i got to play for a win. But anyway, for me, it's a very unusual tournament. I have no draws. I'll be paired down next round, but... You know, usually like an IM or an FM. So even pared down is tough for me. And I should have white. I should. Doesn't mean I will. And I'll equalize colors that way. And uh, Karen's not winning all of her games yet, but she's playing up two sections. Also that. Yeah. She's playing under 1,800. And she's... Yeah. I don't know if you're winning because I haven't looked at it. I haven't looked at it. Did you look at it? No. Okay, well... That doesn't mean you're winning when your point's frightened. I was frightened. and Anyway, so, yeah, Karen got confused in her second round and didn't realize she lost on time. So, in her position, she claims is winning. So, we'll look at it at some point, and I'll make a correction later. Um, but, yeah, she's been playing pretty well. First game was up and down. It could have gone either way, and the game was, like, five and a half hours. Second game could have gone either way, and she accidentally lost on time. Third game, the guy played pretty well and beat her. 
Yeah, this only game, and she's only played three games because she has seven rounds and I have nine rounds. The reason is my tournament has GM and IM norms. It has to be nine rounds. It has to be. Chance, 10 by 10 subscribe. There weren't a lot of donations this stream. Very suspicious. Lots of game analysis. You guys are the worst. Lots of viewers, though. 300 viewers. So thanks for the subscription. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, my next round's in an hour and 15 minutes. We play two games today, 11 and 6. Then tomorrow, I think it's 10 and 4.15. And then our flight Monday, 6 a.m. Get back to Atlanta. Uh-huh. We'll be home 11 a.m. noon. Something like that. We'll be in our house. Yeah. And so forth. Back to work. So, I mean, tournament's interesting. Karen and I have played a total of eight games, and we have zero draws. So we're the best. Yeah. Hey, remember you thought you might get a bye last round? There's a guy rated 500. He got the buy. Yeah. Might get a buy this round, but if there's an even number, you won't. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to change every round. It's random. Yeah. All right. So I'll probably, next time I'm going to stream probably at home, but maybe from here once more. Just internet's bad and I don't have lights or microphone. And I'm, we're busy here. You know, so can't be streaming all the time. All right. Go, Ben, etc. cetera. Um, now trying to learn one, two, three, four, set up a Discord for – watching, talking about the games as they're going on live. If you go to followchess.com, my games are shown there live because I have an electronic score thingy they give me. So you can watch it there. Sometimes it's a little slow. So follow, and also if you go to the Foxwoods Open uh, chess website that has the standings and all that stuff, there's a live link that I think goes to follow chess. You can watch it there. And the next game starts at 11 a.m. Eastern and then like that. And if you follow me on Twitter, you can see how I'm doing because I post my results. And Anyway, so on my stream so far, I've shown all, all five of my games. Um, I showed four games this stream, and I showed one game on Wednesday night after I played it. So all my games have been shown. Uh, next week on Friday, I play Ginger GM. And on Wednesday, Twitch is doing some weird nonsense. Komodo, chess team, I don't know. Thousands of people. So I'll be doing that Wednesday. So busy. Yeah. All right. Thanks for considering donating and maybe not doing it. All right. Bye.